just got tired of the city, got tired of where mankind's going and always had the idea I could do it better. And somebody once said, well, if you could do it better, why don't you try? And so I came out here and ever since, it just felt like it was right. So I've been here for about 17 years now. I'm in Widgeon Slough off the Pitt River. It's a beautiful, magical place. And there's many threats from poachers to local governments to poisons and pollutions. And I've been here trying to save it for, like I said, 17 years. Welcome to my island. I'm Shadow and this is Nowhere Island. It's been built from mostly discarded objects, stuff that was thrown away, uh, floating away, and I just salvaged them and built a little island out of them. Gave them a second chance. So there's lots of old logs that uh, even the loggers won't take. Uh, old barrels, they float along the river everywhere and they can multiple usages because two of them is 900 pounds of flotation. The main house has 80 barrels on it. So that there is like over 32,000 pounds. And as you see, the barrels can be your gardens. Uh, most of it was done with stuff like a find. Uh, there was always a little bit of cost here and there. Uh, every few months I get a couple of dollars from recycling. People come out here on the rivers, they usually throw their cans and bottles overboard. I usually end up salvaging all that up when I'm cleaning up. And when I go to town, I'll end up getting some nails or fasteners. Other people that I know will also drop off materials when they have excess amount at their job sites boards and nails, screws and whatnot. I try to live without money as much as possible. It's kind of a raw mentality as far as I'm concerned. It's good for some people, it's just not good for me. Electricity is all off grid. Uh, I used to have uh, wind generators. What happens is out here you get gusts of wind and it starts to rattle it to a point where it'll break your, your blade. And I made a few and I had them sticking into my roof a few times. <laughs> Best thing is I have here is solar panels and I rewired them so even at low light condition like this, they're juiced, there's no problems. And every structure you see here is all off grid, all on their own. So there's no cables or wires going from each piece. So there's no problems if anything ever broke apart. Nothing goes overboard that hasn't been either cleaned first through natural filtrations or that's natural already to go back in. First, I have to use everything by hand because I didn't want to use any power, gasoline, or anything. So mostly be hand tools, hand saws, hand drills. It takes a lot of time, but the end results, after you all your hard work and all your labor, it looks something like this. So this is the kitchen area, but I'm more into a shop. So we'll go into my little shop over here. This would do a lot of the maintenance, a lot of the fixing, and a lot of the rebuilding of things, not only for the island, but also bird boxes, bat condos, and things for the outside of the bush in the areas. I have my firewood stored everywhere just because you need to be warm. Better have it than not need it than need it and not have it. So this is a pantry and it's kind of loaded on food right now, which is good. I'm not much of a cook so it just sits around. <laughs> but I'm ready for winter. This toilet here is composting. It turns your waste into usable soils. And then you can remove this and put it into composting. So now there's no waste going into the waters. So this is the library and this is the bio lab. This is where I do a lot of the research of what's going on in the environment that I'm in. And this is how I know what kind of poisons are toxifying our species. We need to not only know, but now it's time to find out how we can go the other way in reverse course and correct the problems. So this is the arts and crafts area, which sometimes in the winter time you get kind of bored. So you do a lot of drawing, different kinds of arts and paints and keep busy. This is my office where I do a lot of wildlife research in here. Now, when you're out in the winter time, like I was saying, one of the other things you deal for being stir crazy in the winter is movies. So as you can see, I got a pretty good selection. And this here is the room that I like the most of all. This room, this is where I do my shaman work, my energy for healing and protecting the area, like uh, doing card readings. It's one of the things that I enjoy, but also is helpful. So one of the things that I do here to manage my own waste is when you get stuff, you always have packaging. So once you separate all your cardboard, you separate all your plastics and all your tins, your glass, pretty soon all you have left now is just your composting. So anything that's food related goes to composting and now you really have nothing left to go into the garbage. It's all recyclable, all returnable. So inside this composting shed, there's two piles. 
and one's for more of the waste that's more recent and one that's been broken down already for about eight months and then as time goes that will get shifted and the piles will shift again and then you can put into medium for your other gardens and whatnot you need so on the other side is composting containers but then in the middle is for where i do a shower stall and i take the shower bag from the sun and i put that into there and there's your hot water so this is another float here that's all designed for gardens outdoor uh, lots of your fruit and vegetables you need for the year and same thing with this one here for you lounging around which are more gardens and herbs and spices this is for your natural filtration as well as for chickens this natural filtration is done with layers so you can use different kinds of husk materials that cancel out your gray water so when you're done your dishes or done your brushing your teeth you pour it onto here and then when it goes back into the ecosystem it doesn't wreck your ecosystem that you're in some of these layers are coconuts husks and some of them are corn husks and there's a few other layers depending where you are you can always find some information on your internet nowadays of what would be good mediums to use so these are the chickens here my five new babies they are not ready quite ready to start producing eggs yet they're just still getting used to their area and environment we also get swallows that migrate here you get the mud swallows and the barn swallows some of them like to have the boxes as you can see up here on the side and then you have other ones that don't like the boxes. They'd rather make their own nest, as you can see underneath the awning. And as you can see up here, there's a bat condo. So I got my new bat house ready for my nice, beautiful creatures that come around here at nighttime and eat up all your mosquitoes. Now this one here, this is a new boat, and I'm gonna turn it into gardens. So you do everything from your seeding all the way through to your, to your coming down and harvest, including drying, hopefully. And it's under construction now, but it's a project I'll be working on probably throughout the winter. And as you can see, there's always more gardens. You need more food supplies. And in here, you got a lot of uh, climbing raspberries. Uh, you got potatoes, and you got strawberries, and lots of kale. The food supply is now about maybe 30% of my what I need. That's why I had the idea for the boat to grow more for winter stock. Uh, right now we've got lots of oregano. Oregano is great for you for medicinal purposes. And I have three different varieties here and I also have lots of other different kinds of spices. Another one I grow lots of is lettuces and kale, different types of spinaches, because it's good to eat your, your greens every day. And another big important when you're on the water is you have to have vitamin C. So for mine, I have grapes, blueberries, strawberries, fig, and uh, eggs every day from the chickens. I'm a pack rat by nature, so I always store more than I'm going to eat. Drinking water is still an issue. I still haven't built any type of uh, filtration systems yet. I have a few ideas, just haven't got around to get any material that I need to build with. Uh, so right now I go up to a natural spring up in the mountain. It takes me about a half hour, 40 minutes to get my water. And sometimes I go to the neighbor's house and he lets me tap into his, which comes from the natural spring. So I don't have to hike up so far, get the same water. You cannot drink the water right from here because you have beavers, you have deers and other animals frequent the area in the water and that can cause bacteria and viruses. Getting around if you have to go to land is pretty hard. Main mode of transportation is I have a uh, small little skiff if I'm paddling around getting wood and if I'm going a little bit longer distance either for wildlife checking out or just checking around the slough for garbage and whatnot or even just to go to town I bring my kayak and usually I take a bicycle and usually it's about a half hour to a road and then from there you have about an hour and a half to town. After that then you do your town and then all the way back again. So you're looking a full day just to leave. Usually when I go to town it's for supplies, supplies only. I have a, a good dear friend of mine I see quite often. Uh, I usually went once a week I see her. And uh, other than that I have local friends that come up on the waters once in a while. They hang out for a little bit and give me some companionship as it were and hang out and have some laughs and then they leave again. Other than that, no, I'm more of a loner type of spirit. I like to be with nature more than humans half the time. I guess that's one of my faults, but at the same time, one of my strengths. There is always challenges with every adventure, and most of them revolve around make sure you have enough firewood and keep them warm in the wintertime. On these waters, you find lots of pieces of wood and material that 
no logger is going to take. It's not worth anything, and it's just navigational hazards. So I pull the bits and pieces up, and I chop them down to one footers, and I use those. And then in wintertime, you're by the wood burning heat with good BTUs. You always have to check out your lines and make sure they're okay, because you do have lots of storms to creep up out of nowhere. And the next thing you know, you break your lines. So you always got to make sure you do a line check. I have uh, four anchors down. Two of them are wrapped around and tied off to the pilings, which is maritime law. Now you're able to be safe and set in this area. And other times you have to worry about your own mental mind. Stir crazy is always something that people go through, cabin fever. So you learn how to watch movies and read books, play music, just to make you feel different for those moments. So one of the beautiful things that I love here is the tranquilness of the area. But it's also good for all the different species that migrate here, that live here, that uh, just stop in just to mate or to feed or just a pit stop along the way to their journey for the migrations. Now, there is many, many different varieties of species from birds to mammals, insects. The list is countless. Well, the usual routine for me is I wake up in the morning, about 5.30 usually. I run around first thing, check out the slough, and I run around my docks, make sure I can hear anything for poachers. And then you have your chores, your daily chores you have to do every day. Then you get in the kayak and go for rips around, pulling out garbage out of these ecosystems. And there's always down boats that need to be helped, and sometimes animals, you'll find them and hear them, and you need to go save them. I'm a guardian to protect this area, the environment. Somebody has to do something, and I'm not complicit. So if I see something wrong, I have to step in and do something. The biggest threat I see in the area is a government that's no longer in touch with our home and native lands. Now our local government is turning around and using Roundup for the last about seven years now. And as most of you know, it is quite toxic. Now they claim it to be a park now. It's not a park. It never has been. And it shouldn't be. This should be preserved. We need to be smart and selective of what areas we can go to and what areas we should just leave alone. The local government has been trying to get rid of me for years. If this area was protected properly and we didn't have these obstructions that are happening constantly, then I would not be needed here no more. Nature would not need me and I can move on to another place to protect that place. But as long as this place needs me, this is going to be my post where I'm going to protect. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this. You can also follow Shadow on his YouTube channel and on Instagram. Thanks for watching.